Our next item is honoring distinguished women. And we've got, there are, every woman is distinguished, but every time we get few women who have really proved themselves in their own field. Um, we are going to start. We will start with Mubajjal Baban. Mubajjal Baban passed away um, not long ago in February. She was born 1933 in Baghdad into a progressive family. In her youth, she joined the national feminist movement in Iraq. She participated with Dr. Nazih al the first female minister in history of Iraq and the Arab world in founding the Iraqi Women's Rights Association, which was later called the Iraqi Women's Association. In 1951, she was appointed to the Central Bank of Iraq to be the first woman to be appointed. To the, uh, to be appointed. She was dismissed and persecuted due to her human rights defense activities. She left Iraq for Britain in 1976 as a result of the political pressure she faced at the time. Mubajjal contributed to the activities of the Iraqi community there through her membership in the board of the Iraqi Forum in Britain. Walidat Mubajjal Baban fil 20 min Aylul 1933 fi Baghdad. انضمت للحركة الوطنية النسوية في شبابها وشاركت مع الدكتورة نزيها الدليمي أول وزيرة في تاريخ العراق والوطن العربي في تأسيس رابطة الدفاع عن حقوق المرأة العراقية والتي سميت رابطة المرأة العراقية فيما بعد عينت عام 1951 في البنك المركزي العراقي لتكون أول امرأة تتعين في البنك المركزي ثم فصلت بسبب أفكارها التقدمية غادرت العراق إلى بريطانيا عام 1976 نتيجة للضغوط السياسية التي واجهتها أنذاك وساهمت مبجل في نشاطات الجالية هناك من خلال عضويتها للهيئة الإدارية لمنتدى العراق في بريطانيا توفيت مبجل في لندن يوم 3 شباط 2023 Can I please ask Councillor Fiona McNaught and Professor Ahmed Rubayi to come to the stage? to present the awards. Uh, Umm Sar, Selwa Umm Sar, she will, she will get the plaque. This is Manal Al-Ani. Manal Al-Ani is an Australian Iraqi journalist and radio presenter working for the SBS, Arabic 24 radio, radio channel in Australia. She is a co-host of the drive show Australian Al-Yom, Australia Al-Yom, aired weekdays from 4 to 6. Mrs. Al-Ani worked at the Iraqi, at the Iraqi TV over 25 years of work in journalism and received training at Reuters in Cairo Bureau in 2006 to become a new editor, news editor. Manal Al-Ani is also an ATI accredited Arabic interpreter. Mrs. Al-Ani also holds master's degree in English literature from Jadara University in Jordan and a bachelor's degree in English language from Baghdad University, Iraq. On personal level, Mrs. Al-Ani is married to Dr. Salim Al-Fahad, SBS Arabic 24 newsreader interpreting and translation. Can I ask uh, Manal Al-Ani to come to the stage, please? And can I ask again, and can I ask Samira, Samira to come to the stage, Samira Ali? Yeah.
Thank you, Manuel. <laughs> Councillor Carmen Lazar. Mrs. Carmen Lazar has over 30 years of management experience. Mrs. Lazar began her career as an interpreter, then manager of accounts at the Sydney Morning Herald. She is a holder of a degree in management and a holder of a diploma in community services certificate. She continued to pursue she continued to pursue her passion for community work in Sydney and currently the program manager and uh, consortium led for uh, Assyrian Resource Center, Chaldean Leagues, and, and Antiochian Church and Armenian Resource Center. She managed the Assyrian Saturday Language School as principal and has contributed to the development and publications of many language resource books. Mrs. Lazar has held various positions on boards and committees including Fairfield City Council, Settlement Council of Australia, Fairfield Councils, sorry, Councils Fairfield uh, Migrant Interagency, Act for Peace Commissioner in nation, with National Council of Churches in Australia, Refugee Task Force, and the National Council of Churches in Australia. Fairfield Hospital, the Consumer and Community Particip Participation Network, Primary Health Network, Mrs. Lazar has been to Geneva, UNHCR, NGO consultation for three years. She has been the recipient of various awards. The most notable to date is the Order of Australia Medal. Okay. <laughs> So I will. Thank you, Fiona. Thank you, Fiona. Yes. Rachel Hayworth. Rachel. <laughs> Rachel is a marketing expert with over six years of non-profit experience and 25 years in marketing. She is the marketing communication and fundraising manager at Western Sydney Migrant Resource Center and the founder of the Pink Elephant Support Network. She is a volunteer for organizations like TED's, TEDx, Paramata, and African Health Australia, and a consultant for Aiken, the University of Sydney, and more. She has a commercial mind and a community heart and is passionate about making positive impact in the community through her agency. She is known for her unwavering commitment, genuine approach and innovative thinking. Can I ask Charisma to come to the stage please to give the award? Typical Rachel. <laughs> While we're taking photos, can I ask Nadia Bocci to come to the stage for a minute to talk about the leadership program? Nadia. Good evening, everyone. Assalamu alaikum. Um, I'd like to acknowledge the traditional honor of the lands in my language, in Arabic. Awad taqdeem wafir al ihtiram wa taqdeer ila sukan al asliyin lil ard al ladi nahya fiha al yawm, alayha al yawm fi Sydney. Kul shuyukhihim mimman qadaw nahbahum wa mimman lazalu ala qayd al hayat. Let's start with the question. How many women here today would like to make an impact in the community or become a leader? All of us. All of you. Come on, show some hands, don't be shy. Beautiful. And, and how many women here who are already leaders and they would like to share their expertise and empower other women who are starting their leadership journey? Put your hands up. How many leaders we have in the room that they would like to impact others? 
Beautiful. Well, you're in the right place. My name is Nadia. I'm Nadia Bushi. I'm the Community Development Officer at Western Sydney MRC, and I'm coordinating um, the Cald Women Leadership Training Program that is hosted by Western Sydney MRC, funded by Multicultural New South Wales. Um, the program is um, targeting women in, uh, from different backgrounds. So as women, we face numerous challenges when it comes to leadership positions. However, this program is designed to help us overcome these barriers by providing the necessary tools and support needed to succeed. It's a unique opportunity for women to come together, share their experience, and learn from one another. By completing this program, which is going to start in April 24th, you will be able to develop your own unique leadership style that reflects your values and strengths. Communicate with confidence and clarity. Build and lead high-performing teams that are collaborative and innovative. Advocate and negotiate with skill and expertise to achieve your goals. Completing our women leadership training will also boost your confidence, inspire you to take bold action, and connect you with the network with the like-minded women. You will, emerge, you will emerge from this program with a renewed sense of purpose, a clear vision of your career path, and the skills and knowledge to achieve success on your own terms. Last, I urge the amazing women in this room today to take advantage to, of this program and register. This is your chance to make a difference in your community and to become leader you were meant to be. To register, we have this banner here for participants that they would like to learn and uh, upskill themselves. And we have a beautiful banner on the back that we have Sana's face there. So if you are a leader and you would like to empower others, just register from that QR code there. Thank you so much. That was two minutes. Thank you, Nadia. Thank you very much. Our next woman that we are honoring is Delilah Shinko. Delilah has extensive experience of 20 years working with refugees with refugees newly, ar newly new arrivals through various agencies as Migrant Resource Center, Navitas, and SSI. She has seven years working with NSW, with New South Wales Police, and currently is working with the DCJ. On her volunteer time, she has started and managed an Assyrian school in eastern suburbs for 10 years. She established and initially ran the, As the Assyrian Cultural and Social Youth Association for several years. It is still a thriving organization. For the past four years, she has been president of the Assyrian Women uh, Organization, a dynamic woman who is emphatic, kind-hearted, and passionate about helping others. Can I ask Sham, Shama, Shama Pandi, and Amal, Amal cannot come up the stairs. Do you mind if we go down there? Yes, so Dalila Hnaka. We are Amal, Amal Hnaka. Shama, Shama, can you stay please? Luisa Romanos. Luisa was born in a town called Bichari in the north of Lebanon. Bishari? Bishari. Bishari. In a town called Pshari in the north of Lebanon. She was involved early in her life in volunteer work, 
Her passion for volunteer work and activism was never affected by migration, marriage, and devoted motherhood to three children. She's a board member of the Arabic Australian Federation, AAF. She's an active member of a Labour, Labour Party and Gaza Surf Club. Par she participated actively in many demonstrations, gathering events in support of human rights, women's rights, Palestine, and Australian First Nation people. Can I please ask, can I please ask Louisa to come to the stage? And can I ask board member Mr. Hayan, Hayan and Nashi to come to the stage as well? Graduate of uh, the Higher Te Teachers Institution, Institute, Department of Arabic Language and Psychology. Since arriving to Australia in 2005, she had been involved in voluntary work. One of, she is one of the founders of the Mandean Women Association. She's a member of the Mandean Supreme Council, worked as a volunteer in Mission Australia to support immig immigrants. She's a broadcaster in Voice of Mandean Radio. She's responsible for the Women and Child Committee in the Sabian Mandean Association. Part, she participate, participation of the Women and Child Committee in the Sabian Mandian Association in the Talking Pictures program, which dealt with breast cancer, cancer, colon cancer, and bowel cancer. The supervisor of the project was the New South Wales Health and Starts Organization. Can I please ask Khalida to come? And can I ask Ms. Fiona? Fiona to come again to the stage. And Hind, and you're here. Board member. <laughs> Sena Yunan. Sorry, Sena Yunan. No, 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 she arrived to, uh, from Iraq in 1993. She got a diploma in business management, worked in hospitality. She works at two primary schools since 2002 as a teacher, teacher's aide, and school learning support officer assisting Chaldean, Assyrian, and Arabic speaking community. In the last 21 years, she has provided services to young mothers to better manage difficulties and issues associated with teaching teaching young students, particularly for new arrivals and students with special needs. She has worked with STARTS, providing support and advice to refugees, particularly to women and children who experienced persecution and torture in their home country. Sana is involved in the voluntary work in the local church teaching young students as well as being a choir member for almost 25 years. In 2017, Sana has been active mem a member with the Chaldean women. Sana, Sana Yunan. Can I kindly please ask Charisma, Char Charisma to come to the stage? And Dr. Alia, if she's around. Is Dr. Alia here, the board member? 
Sino? Congratulations. Sana Abu Khalil. Sana participated in volunteer work among elderly people through the Catholic Care Foundation and affiliates with Advanced Diversity Services and in teaching, uh, dri and is t teaching driving to refugees and new arrivals. She participated in Wellways Advisory Group Project for Psychological and Mental Health and in the Cult Engagement Project Advisory Group Project. Active members, she's an active member of Sydney Cultural Forum and Association of Khairu Jalis. Khairu Jalis and worked as a volunteer with the Arab Council Australia. <laughs> Can I please ask, uh, is May ready? Tanya. Can I ask Tanya, please? Tanya Muhammad. Uh, May is here. Okay. <laughs> May? Okay. Mm -hmm. Fiona, sorry, F can I ask Fiona McNaught to come again to the stage? She has a degree in accounting and she teaches hairdressing. She teaches hairdressing. She arrived to Australia in 2004, worked as a volunteer at Liverpool Public School, also worked in Mission Australia. She studied at TAFE and got two certificates in hairdressing. She was one of the founders of the first Mandian Women's Association in 2006. Uh, the association holds many activities during the year, mainly to support women and children, also helping them to settle in Australia as soon as possible. She, ha she also has a child care certificate from Liverpool TAFE and hypnotherapy certificate. But that's interesting. <laughs> Sorry. Publications of the first book called St Stories Inspired by Al Kanzariba in 2000. Kanzarabba, Kanzarabba, 2022. Mrs. Al Khamisi is a very active member, volunteering her time and efforts towards her Mandian community. Also engages with multiple Iraqi and Arabic community. She contributed in several local activities representing her Mandian women organization. Uh, can I ask Cherish Shmabi to come, please? And Tanya?
Thank you, Mabruk. Has, 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 has. Ifat Khodor. Ifad arrived to Australia in 2008. She has a Bachelor of Architecture. She had the highest degree in her class from Baghdad University. She also has a Diploma in Architecture from Sydney, Advanced Diploma in Sustainable Design, Sydney, and she is doing a Diploma in Building Design, Sydney, to be completed this year. She got to know the yoga for the first time in her life, and from it, a ray of light entered her mind. So she started studying and became a yoga trainer, specializing in trauma healing. She founded the Yoga and Beyond business, and through it, she started spreading the program to the communities that need it, aiming to enhance positive energy and smile to everyone. She is also working as a voluntary teacher assistant at the Mandean School in Liverpool. Can I please ask uh, Professor Munjid al Mudaris to come to the stage and Mr. Jalil Doman, board member? You can't? Okay. Can I ask maybe Tanya? Is Tanya there? And Ifad, sorry. Ifad, where is Ifad? Ifad is not here? She's here. Oh, sorry, I can't see. <laughs> Ahlan. Lydia Anwia. She is an she is an Assyrian from Iraq. She arrived to Australia as a refugee as a refugee in 2008. She completed her bachelor degree in business and commerce management in 2015 at Western Sydney University. Her professional career journey started at Western Sydney Migrant Resource Centre in 2016 as information and referral officer. In 2017, she joined Core Community Services, multicultural communities team to support new arrivals. Since 2021, she was given an opportunity to transition into casework to a case to case worker under the Iraqi and Arabic settlement project, she has positively impacted the settlement process of newly arrived refugees. Can I please ask Lydia to come to the stage? And can I ask Mr. John Dean, president of the Mounties Club, to come to the stage, please? And Lydia Mabrouk. <laughs> Last but not least, Diala Yohannes. Did I pronounce it correctly? She's an Assyrian woman from Syria, arrived in Australia in 2005, studied English language course and then certificate four in hairdressing. In 2018, she joined Core Community Services Settlement Program as a volunteer, a position that had enabled her to give back to her new home, new home Australia. Through her volunteering, she has facilitated four hairdressing courses of 20 sessions, attracting and graduating 40 Iraqi and Syrian women at core community services. 
Can I ask Diala to come to the stage, please? Can I ask also the poet Yahya Samawi and Wadi Ashan? And Wadi and Wadi and Leith to come to the stage, please. Diala. Can we have a big round of applause to all these wonderful women? Can we please ask all the, the women to come to the stage to take a photo? The women who were honored this night? Is everyone here? Come on.